Pastrum, I'm the team manager. And uh, I just uh, want to let you know a little bit what, how we will do it. Uh, I will explain a little bit our, about our strategy, uh, let you know about our riders that are here today, and uh, about the other riders that are not here in the press conference. So, uh, yeah, as I said, we are super happy to be back in the Giro this year. Um, our strategy will be more or less the same and the objective will be more or less the same as, uh, as last year. And, and that's to be super active, make an impact in the race and, uh, and uh, yeah, this uh, visual, uh, visibility, of course, um, that uh, we are doing something in the race. Um, the other objective is uh, to try to win a stage. Uh, I think we have, uh, we were very close last year, but we couldn't get uh, the dot on the eye, so to say, with the actual stage win. But uh, we are here again uh, to try that. And uh, the last objective, which is maybe a minor one, but uh, it's still an objective, and that is to get everybody sound and uh, safe to the end of the year. And, uh, it's never, never an easy task and uh, we have a, a few new newcomers uh, that never have done a Grand Tour uh, and, uh, and also our Israeli guy Neil that uh, last year had some, uh, some health problems and had to abandon pretty early in the, in the, in the race. So Guy Neil is here on my right side um, and uh, for sure he's uh, eager to come back uh, and show what he can do. Uh, then we have uh, Awet uh, Gebremedin. Uh, for him, it's the first time in the Giro, and uh, I'm sure he his story is an interesting one, and uh, you can ask, uh, ask more questions about that uh, later on. And then we have uh, two Italians here today, uh, Christian Sbarali, that did it last year with us. Um, and uh, and uh, Dalio Cimolai that also uh, now, well actually it's your first uh, Giro d'Italia so it's going to be a, an in emotional one for you. Um, we were also supposed to have uh, Ruben Plaza today here but uh, he got lost on the bike so we'll see if he gets back before the Giro starts. Or not. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's uh, more or less a short introduction. Uh, without any further further minutes, uh, maybe you would like to ask any any questions. sure it's something that we, we want to continue to grow and uh, to remember our DNA and our mission is to also uh, evolve and uh, develop uh, Israeli cycling. So that's something that we are always uh, thinking about. Uh, but at the same time, this year we have 30 riders in the team uh, from 1st of June when, uh, when the fifth uh, Israeli will join the team, Itamar Einhorn. And, um, and that's for sure it's a strength. Last year we were a, a few less, uh, but, uh, but we, we have added both uh, depth uh, into that and, and yeah, strong riders for sure. Um, we, we can say that we have uh, had a nice season so far, but it's not, uh, it's not been full of glory. It's been a lot of struggling uh, and we have had some injuries also, like uh, with Ben Hermas recently, that was a blow, blow to us. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, but all in all, we have had a very good uh, team cohesion, and that's uh, that's something that we want to build on uh, also for the future. Is there a strategy for next year to apply for water license for the tour? Well, we did. 
did we did uh, present the, the application or the, the intention to, uh, to do the application for a world tour license. Uh, however, it's it's very difficult, as you all can imagine. Uh, the rules are uh, that they are take into account the last three years, and uh, of course we were a much smaller team three years ago, so we didn't have that many points. So it remains to be seen what is possible. Uh, for the team, if we can do it now, or if it's going to be a, a thing for the future. Yep. So that's a very good question. Uh, two, two of the other guys that are not here today is Conor Dan and uh, Guillaume Bavin. And uh, what we have seen in the last race is uh, we can sure, for sure trust uh, Davide to be our leader in the sprints, even if we have uh, some strong other guys. And uh, this will be the case. Uh, and uh, we, we, we will for sure back, back him up with, uh, with all these guys that you mentioned. And, uh, and then we will see how the how everything will pan out. But, uh, that's the initial strategy. And then uh, the last guy that uh, I didn't yet mention from the team is uh, Chris Nalans. He he's also more for the lumpy stages or the, the climbing stages. And uh, like you saw last year in the Euro, in the last uh, week, he was, I think, almost every day in the break. So for sure, it's something that you. Maybe not every day be in the break, but uh, he, he would like to, to try uh, try to do something in the last 10 days. Well, we think in this way that if we go for stages, then maybe something else will come. But uh, in the first, uh, the first objective is to hunt for stages for sure. sempre reputato un corridore italiano anomalo inizialmente perché ho sempre avuto la fissazione del tour e dopo anche perché le squadre con cui ho militato mi hanno sempre diretto al tour e finalmente dico finalmente l'ho capito tardi ma ce l'abbiamo fatta sono, sono emozionato come, come un neo pro perché da italiano quindi partecipare al Giro d'Italia è qualcosa di, di straordinario Finalmente grazie alla Israel eh, siamo qua, siamo qua per far bene e per provare a portare a casa una, una bella vittoria di tappa.
Beh, riguardo alla prima domanda, che avevo bisogno insomma, di ributtarmi nello sprint per trovare la confidenza giusta, eh, perché è vero che nelle, negli ultimi due anni mi sono messo al servizio di Demar, però le volate anche in là mi ho quasi sempre fatte, perciò avevo bisogno di, di trovare la confidenza. E per quanto riguarda la seconda domanda, eh, come ha detto lui è vero, ci sono bei nomi, grossi velocisti, ma come squadra attrezzata vedo solo la quick step quindi se devo fare, prendere un punto di riferimento come, come il treno è sicuramente da loro Ok, so the answer is uh, quite it's true um, obviously this change in particular the change is coming from the last two years in which I was working for the Mar um, but I need to be again back to be uh, the man going for the winner because I need to regain this kind of confidence I used to do it when I was racing for Lampard um, So it's sort of, let me say, back, back to the origin, uh, and it's good thing for me, the feeling is good. Um, and it's absolutely true, your point, that there are no dominant train. Um, if I have to say one thing, though, uh, is uh, um, the turn of quick step, I think that they have probably the best left for the train, and so uh, tactically it would be the thing that we would uh, follow as a move forward. Well, from the mother, Penso che innanzitutto sì, conosco molto bene da diciamo tolti i primi 50-60 km della tappa sono le strade sono le strade dei miei allenamenti quando sono in Italia quindi conosco molto bene la tappa sicuramente è una tappa molto insidiosa e dipende come verrà fatta però eh, sicuramente non sarà una volata di gruppo, questo di sicuro e dipenderà anche molto dalle condizioni meteo perché si annuncia pioggia e tu hai detto quanti? 50, 60? Se piove facciamo la metà. So the question was about uh, um, a stage that uh, uh, Christian knows very well because it's the one where he, where he is from. Stage on Sunday, stage two, when you finish with Puccetio, uh, it looks like a lot of riders went into the wrecking and they noticed that uh, there could be, let me say, a sprint with 40, 50 riders at the end. Uh, and Christian said, Well, yes, obviously I know that area very well because this, this is where I train when I'm, when I'm in Italy for training. Um, and if I just uh, not uh, think about the first 40 kilometers, all the rest uh, is exactly on my road. Uh, it really, really depends on the weather. Forecast is rain, and if it's raining, uh, you say 40 50, I expect maybe hike. Uh, but yes, it could be like a, a small group sprint at the end. Any more questions? Altre domande? I have a question for Fabrizio. Uh, you speak English? Yeah. Uh, we read all your story. Same as this, and uh, after he explained me everything, what is the strategy, like what is the uh, for hero, why you need to help me, and everything. Okay, I was so happy and uh, say to, to him, like, thank you. But at the end, after 10 minutes, I check again my WhatsApp, <laughs> it is true. <laughs> like, I was so, so grateful. And, uh, 
Council to you know, to the history or the you know guys. And uh, yeah, all the way it was some crazy situation and uh, now we are back here. And uh, so happy for your team. Thank you so much. That's actually part of the, the, the strategy of the team. We had the, the base there and we asked a lot of riders to, to move you to Girona for at least periods of the year so that they can train together. It's becoming more and more of a hub of society. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have any other questions, I would like to ask uh, Guy Neve uh, what, what he thinks about uh, coming back to the Giro one year after. <coughs> um, yeah, so uh, last year uh, we started the Giro in Israel, which was a really great and amazing experience for an Israeli rider. To do my first run tour there was absolutely amazing with uh, the Israeli fans that were way over than what uh, we expected, but then uh, unfortunately, already on the fifth stage in the in, in the Giro here in Italy, uh, I got sick and I uh, was not able to finish it. Um, coming here much stronger this year and with more confidence, uh, the team believe in me and I'm here to to make uh, this Giro way better for me, for the team, and to, to be useful for, for the team, for achieve their goals. And I'm really looking forward to start it already. I have a question for you as well, for me. Um, the, the word historic about last year's Giro has been used, abused, and we heard it a lot, but obviously it was historic. Then. You being Israeli, what, what is your opinion? Yeah, it, it was really a big event for for Israel. Uh, you have to understand that in Israel cycling, uh, most of the people don't really know what is professional cycling. It's not like in Italy, and having one of the biggest races in Israel was was amazing. And uh, it's all of a sudden, people start to understand cycling in Israel. Still, we are not a cycling nation. Uh, not like Italy, France, Spain, but it's growing and uh, people start to understand, people know what it is, uh, the Giro d'Italia, the media uh, gets more and more involved and uh, following the team activity and uh, it was uh, really, I think, a game changer for the cycling culture in Israel and uh, we will uh, continue build on it and continue uh, grow the cycling culture in Israel, hopefully with more and more Israeli young people uh, that will want to become professional cyclists and develop the cycling in Israel. Another part of the legacy, I would say, is all the small cycling schools and uh, different projects in Israel that are taking place now, which is, I think it's a super great thing and uh, and I would say even a role model for a lot of other countries that could uh, take up the same, same, same kind of idea. No, not yet. <laughs> uh, it's not officially open okay. yet. Yeah, there are some minor things that they have to do still, uh, regulations and things like this. But uh, I think first of June or something like this. It